So I'm just going to go try and go really quickly over some of the trends that, that we've been seeing. Um, I'll, I'll give a very quick um, um, overview on us, and I'll keep it really short because um, I always hate company pitches because I figure you're here to kind of hear stuff. So basically, this is the, the two second on us. We're 100 people. Um, we're venture funded. Um, we've only taken in uh, 7 million, so not a very large amount in our Series B. But we are over 100 people. You can do the back of the napkin math and see that we're doing pretty well for ourselves. Um, we're really excited about our growth. We're really excited about where we're at. Um, next slide. This is the uh, Aren't We Great slide. We've got lots of next logos <laughs> that we cover, and um, we've been doing a lot of stuff with different people. Next slide. Um, we basically have three products. Um, this is what most people know us for, our store stats product, which is a free product. Every one of you guys can go out there, and you can check out for free online rankings. You can slice and dice it by um, different categories, by different geographies, so you can understand what's going on in the mobile app market. I encourage you to go and, and you know open up an account. We have our analytics account, which is basically, if you're a mobile app developer, you have the problem of wanting to be able to kind of track all of your apps across multiple app stores most of the time. Um, and typically, iTunes, Google Play only give you about um, two weeks worth of data. So we're a place for you to kind of historically cut all that, put it all in one place and have a nice single dashboard. And then our intelligence product, which is Kind of the meat and what we sell, which is basically our estimates of downloads and revenues. We do this for millions of applications. And um, again, just like in our analytics product, you can slice and dice it by um, category, by geography, by time, a whole bunch of different ways. So let's just kind of jump right into things. Um, um, what's been going on? Um, it, it's interesting because we hear a lot about apps and what's going on in apps, and everyone's excited about the new things, but um, where are people making money? <laughs> So the funny thing is, people are making money in games, and in a very, very big way. It's not in a small way. So um, we recently, uh, we do these indexes. Um, we, we, we straddle this sort of funny line between um, we are a, a market data company and I'm a software and analytics company, um, but we also provide this really interesting data. Um, we have a partnership with IDC and a couple other folks. Um, because we have some insights into what's going on in terms of um, what's trending, um, what uh, apps are hot, how they're doing. So we provide these index reports, um, some on a monthly basis, some on a quarterly basis, which I encourage you to go to our blog and look at. Um, and we try to provide really good, insightful information on what's going on in the industry. Um, we recently came out with our market index. Um, it, it got a ton of coverage, um, in large part because for the first time we saw in, in Q2 of last year, Google Play um, by 10% um, outranked uh, the iTunes store in terms of downloads. Now, the flip side of that is while Google Play did better in terms of downloads, um, Apple still made 2.3x um, in terms of revenues. So um, it's kind of a mixed um, sort of statement, right? A um, lot of strength um, showing a lot of where Google Play is, is kind of growing and becoming strong. A lot of money for developers is really still being made um, on the iOS platform. Um, it has been going quickly, and certainly one of the things to take note of when, when we say something like a Google Play is 10% is, is, you know, higher in terms of downloads is that where downloads go, revenues start to follow. And so certainly we expect that over time we'll kind of see a closing of, of that gap. Do you, um, do you have some assumptions though where, why, why if I get half as many downloads from from iOS, but it makes twice as much money. What is what's Android's issue? Um, I wouldn't say it's Android's <laughs> issues per se. Um, it's a little bit of a different model, um, and it depends on the types of games. So um, what's been what's really interesting, and we'll have a slide here a little bit on that, is the countries where people are making their money from, and the assumptions are not exactly what you think. And maybe maybe when I get into that, I can talk a little bit about where that comes. But um, one of the things that we've certainly seen as a part of this is that in-app purchases that's where you make money. Um, we, we've had more than one or two, do you, have, do you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering if you are including in your stats for revenue, uh, some stuff that is premium model or purchases inside the apps. Yes, we are. Um, and in fact, if you go to the store stats, um, you can see it broken down by free, paid, and app. Um, and so you can kind of go through the rankings just yourself to kind of see a little bit about where we're coming from. No, no, there are certain categories for sure. Um, although across both, so let's see. So um, if I remember my stats correctly, and again, you can go to the, the our, actually our latest market index, about 40% um, 
Uh, so games represents about 40% of the downloads, but it represents, and this is both for iTunes and for Google Play, um, but they represent between 70 and 80%, depending on the platform, um, of the revenues. So um, while they certainly aren't the majority of the downloads, people get into those games and they play like mad. Um, and then it, depending on, uh, so what, what you'll see, and there's a slide on this in a little bit, is that, um, and to the question over here, is that the countries are a little bit different on each platform, and that certainly has um, a chunk to, to, to really be responsible for that. Um, so in-app purchases are really big. Um, we've seen time and time and again, and we've, I had a developer who sent me some slides um, he was like, hey, check this out. Developers are really funny. They get really into like analyzing their stuff in different ways, and I'll get these random emails. Um, he took his app from paid to in-app purchase, and literally within a day or two, tripled his revenues. Um, and that's not necessarily that everyone's going to go that way, but that's certainly a trend that we see. So in-app purchases are really the way to kind of to, 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 to monetize um, a lot of the apps that people have. Um, so. Again, uh, you know, this is kind of going back to what we were talking um, talking about before. Um, we really are seeing this con this continual trend of um, games representing um, a, a chunk, a pretty large chunk. You think of all the categories, right? There's a ton of different categories. There's applications, there's photos, there's tools, there's so on and so forth, right? Games, this one category is about 40% of the downloads, and then this one category is between 75 and 80% of the revenues being made across Google Play and, I, and iOS. So this is just kind of talking a little bit about what I mentioned before. Um, so this was our, um, our index that, that we recently released, and this is what I was just kind of talking about earlier. Um, you'll see in a kind of graph format, you know, app downloads for Q2 um, really emerging, and Google Play, you know, kind of coming to its own. That's a that's a pretty big thing, and I think we'd all been waiting for this slide to change, um, which is we're curious when <laughs> Google Play is going to start to catch up to Apple. Um, but even from a download perspective, to have that flip flop, that's a, that was a pretty big thing for us to, to, to see. So um, just to talk a little bit about um, the statement I made earlier about in-app purchases, you'll, you'll see here um, you know, apps that, that don't use in-app purchase versus apps that use in-app purchase, the way that they monetize, there's a pretty significant change in difference, right? So little teeny right here, no in-app purchase, very, very large in-app purchase. Um, so we certainly have been seeing across many apps that the way to monetize them is to get that in-app experience. So it's what I mean by that is, is download this, it's free. Um, like let's say uh, Kakao is a good, good example in, in, in South Korea. Um, you download the app for free, but then all of a sudden there's Cookie Run, which is this really super duper popular game making massive amounts of money. Um, and, and it's the, I'm in the app and oh, I want to upgrade. So, you know, classic example is everyone loves Candy Crush. Or as I like to unofficially call it, Candy Crack. Um, I had it on my phone and I actually had to turn it off my phone because I found myself <laughs> playing at night and then when I saw the puzzles in my eyes, I was like, okay, I've got to stop. <laughs> um, but you're going through it and they have a really great, it's about, it's about creating um, a storyline and then adding to that storyline a really fluid way for people to engage other folks. So you're in Candy Crush, they say, oh, you want to go to the next level, invite your friends on Facebook, right? Or they say, oh, you want to get to that, you know, level number 172, and yes, I know people at that level, which is really frightening. <laughs> um, why don't you, you know, pay for X little candy that explodes and makes things kind of go all over the place for 99 cents? And people do it. It's amazing. So um, that in-app purchase is really kind of a powerful thing. Can I ask you a real quick question? Um, do you see a, a life cycle difference between games on, like average life cycle of the game on uh, Google Play as opposed to iOS? I will be honest in that I haven't looked at that data. Okay. Um, it, it would actually be an interesting thing to kind of pay a little more attention to, and so something you know we can consider to sort of slice and dice. Thanks. Yeah. Have, have you guys started to create a taxonomy of what the in-app purchase is, how the models that are more prevalent and we have not, though, over time, over the next coming months, you'll definitely see us looking more at um, doing that kind of uh, uh, monitoring how people are using apps, let's just put it that way. Um, right now, we really focus on 
the revenues and downloads, so a little bit more of a macro level. Yeah. Um, um, but certainly, we understand, as most people do, that um, marrying that macro level with the kind of a little bit more micro level is a really important thing to do, and, and we're going to be doing more of that. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about the data earlier in the day with the, with the national concern in Korea in terms of usage and your, your candy crack reference. And, um, you know, certainly China. That was completely off the record now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make that clear right now. I mean, I just China, 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 China. China. <laughs> the first ride is always free. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, China had a problem years ago with Magic Box and, you know, people buying these random boxes that you could. Essentially online gambling, right? It was a locker. You buy a box, something could could be in it, maybe not, and they literally had to outlaw it. And I'm just kind of as this becomes more and more prevalent, as people really start to see this less as entertainment and more as you know, gambling in a lot of place in a lot of you know cases, or just feeding an addiction that, that has no check and balance with it. Um, yeah. Well uh, I think I think it's a it's probably a larger social question. Yeah. Um, in terms of how do we how do we um, interact? I saw a really great viral YouTube video recently where it talked about loneliness <laughs> and the rise of electronics, um, and and it was a really interesting kind of statement on where we where we are and what we're doing and how um, how we interact with each other. And and I think the trick is going to be for um, us as uh, app providers, app data providers, app developers, so on and so forth, cell phone companies, to think about from a social standpoint, um, and this again is, is you know me sort of on my own just thinking about this, from a social standpoint, how do we create um, an experience for people that not just enriches their personal life, their business life, but also their personal life, um, to ensure that we're still engaging with each other as human beings. And we can get into long conversations sort of about the social yeah. responsibility part of it. Um, but I, but I'll, I would be certainly interested to see a lot of the larger associations start thinking about a lot of these things as, as we move forward. Um, so we can drive right into country trends. Um, so one of the things that we've noticed is that um, it's definitely, the US market is very clearly important. Um, I think we all sort of intuitively know that. Um, it, it's gonna be important if you're launching an app to launch across the US and, and Japan for sure. Now, what's, what's really interesting, and I can't remember if I put the slide in here because I've been juggling slides around um, for different talks I've been doing, um, but one of the things that we saw from a revenue perspective is that iOS, from a revenue perspective, the kind of top three that, that you're really talking about um, um, are US, Japan, and UK. That's kind of the top three. Again, you can get this on our blog, so if you don't catch it here, go to the market index um, uh, that we just recently released. Um, so. U.S., Japan, and U.K., okay, that's not a particularly big surprise. It's iOS, they're based in, in the United States, it's really important. What was a bit of a surprise for us is that um, on Google Play, the U.S. was not number one. They weren't even number two, in fact, they were number three. And what we saw was number one was Japan. For monetization, right? For, for revenues. For revenues. Yeah, for revenues, um, on Google Play. So, and this is Q2 of 2015. Number one was Japan, number two was South Korea. And number three was the United States. Um, that probably also tracks to a lot of other things, like our, our friends here from Samsung in the background, who I met, met earlier. Um, you know, they're based out of Korea. Android is certainly very popular, doing extremely well. The S4 is doing extremely well. So um, we see a different kind of monetization pattern happening on iOS versus Google Play. Yeah, I think the, the most significant thing for sure is billing engines, right? And, and that's sort of the elephant in the room that nobody talks about, which is, um, you know, we have a startup in particular that's very pervasive in the US. Uh, they have a strong, strong um, presence in uh, Android. And basically they had a bug. They were churning out a very significant number of their users every month because Google wasn't recurrently charging their users. I was one of their users, so I actually said, look guys, I subscribe to this. First month, I'm recurring subscription. I get two emails saying my subscription is canceled. 
my credit card was fine, everything's fine, right? They had a bug, right? And nobody solved it for six months, six months. Yeah. So the problem is building. I think it's just, in Japan, we got built most by the carriers. Yeah, well, and I was say probably is, as well. Yeah. And, you know, it works, yeah. which is magical, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's also, the, you have some of the biggest, like, Japan is free and DNA, and I, I mean, those guys, it's all about the app purchasing, right? And same with Korea as well. Right. Right. All I, was, I was gonna say, as much as it's building, it's also culture. And it's how people interact and how much they interact. Yeah. And certainly we've seen that Japan and Korea interact. But it wouldn't be different than iOS. It wouldn't be different than iOS. I worked in Asia for seven I worked, well, I worked, in, Asia for seven years. I worked in Korea with some of the players you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And in Japan, it's not true. I mean, it would be on iOS as well. Yeah. And people yeah. would use it very heavily on iOS as well. But the, the difference of country you make in terms of revenues has to be from something else more structural. And I think it is because a billion and maybe other issues as well. It, it's, yeah. That's certainly a factor, although I think I would disagree to some extent on the strength of iOS. We certainly see a very, very strong Android presence in Asian countries. We're based in China, sure. so I'm there a lot. Sure. In, in, in China, well, China is a complicated thing, so actually. Um, China is one of the things, launch iOS in China, and we say that very, in China, the Android thing is a, little, a lot more complicated because unlike here, where Google Play dominates, in China, you have a lot of different players. So you've got Baidu, you've got, um, well, you know, you've got a lot of other players in the game now. Baidu just did a big acquisition of um, uh, 91 Wireless. They paid something like $2 billion. And certainly part of the reason why they did that acquisition was because they wanted to, so they're in the top 10-ish for, um, you know, Android uh, uh, app stores. Um, that acquisition likely will bring them into the top three. It's still an open play market. We don't understand um, who's gonna be the real dominant players. We sort of have a sense, um, but it's still kind of playing itself out. Um, but Android prevalence in, in, in Asian countries is very significant. They really dominate in a way that um, iOS doesn't um, in those countries. Do you think it's a social, social economic issue? Because it, the iPhone costs me $2,000 in a country worth the for the you know yeah. the minimum salary is four hundred dollars a month. Oh yeah, and not only that. Device, right? In in China in particular, um, you know, one of the things I was talking with Jende, who's our um, our GM of, of APAC, and um, you know, he's been in the mobile market in China for a very long time. And one of the comments that he said is that he had, which I think plays into this, is um, you know, folks will have to think about: Do I um, go out to the bar, have a couple drinks, which is going to actually be fairly pricey? Or do I play a couple games and that becomes my entertainment? And that game can get billed through my carrier. So I, I think certainly there's some some um, cultural and, and um, social components to why things are different. And I think that's a, a much larger and much more important part of this because I think often one of the things. So um, flip side, right? If we take the flip side, WeChat, for instance, huge in China, I mean, huge. They just released their numbers. I think they were saying something like 235, 250 million, somewhere around there, active users on WeChat. The vast majority of that in, in China. Taking WeChat and making it popular in the United States, um, they haven't been able to get that traction as quickly. Um, and I suspect in part because there are cultural differences as to how people want to interact with um, uh, how, how do they want to interact with their mobile apps? Uh, mm -hmm. Look around is a, is a huge thing, right? Why? Uh, and and challenge that. So, sorry, a lot of challenge that. It's um, a, a messaging app depends if you have like a second person who can do message, right? Yes. So it means like two to tango. I, I and, absolutely agree. And I have, I've heard this argument quite often with the distribution space. So if I can use work for both mobile social mm -hmm. partnerships and work for Facebook with a lot of partnerships. And Every time Facebook will look in like small, people will say, oh, it's a cultural difference in another country. But it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with like, do you have enough peers that are in the same network that will suck you in if you want to be part of it? So it's like, it's a, it's a very slow growth curve. And then it kicks in and goes over. It's true to some extent, although what we've seen is with WhatsApp, which is um, based on in, in the West, is that when they move over to Europe, it's such a similar commonality that, that it, it gets viral very, very quickly. And yes, I agree. I agree it's with you. With those people who see the app in another country, take it back home, yep. start using it, invite their friends. Well, if that was the case, then it would have exploded in San Francisco Bay Area because there's a huge Chinese population here, and it really hasn't. And in part, Chinese who are here, who were born and raised here, who I know we have some in our office, 
there's, there are cultural differences. And, and the laugh, where I was going is the thing we laugh about is look around, right? In China, it's the biggest thing. Everyone does the look around, oh, who's right around? They want to chat with each other. In the US, people think it's creepy. <laughs> right. Again, completely off the record. <laughs> but but uh, I think it's both. I don't think it's you or me. I think it's both. And I, and I think that we don't, we often, especially as Westerners, we don't take enough into account the cultural differences and the ways in which our minds work and the ways in which we interact with things. Because I used to do this shtick as a product manager a long time ago where I'd, I'd, I'd get up and talk like this and I'd say, one of the things I'm trying to think about when I'm creating an MRD is I think about who am I? Am I really my user? And I, this is going to date myself a little bit, I'd say, I look down at my pager. <laughs> my pager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dated myself. I'm a little older than I look. Um, I look down at my pager and that reminds me of my, it wasn't a Newton, what was the one before? Anyway, it reminds me of Newton, reminds me of my laptop, it reminds me of my desktop. And I'd be like, I don't, it reminds me, I, you know, I went to a, a baby IV, it reminds me I went to prep school, and it reminds me that even though I did all of those things, I grew up poor, and then it reminds me that I don't represent anyone, like I am not a target market. So I always have to remember to get in other people's minds, and I think sometimes, I'm not saying you, and I'm not, you know, I'm not singling anyone out, but I've definitely seen in, in the 20 years of doing startups, a lot of folks forget about this kind of cultural difference and downplay it and add to other things. And I think it's not that it's the most important thing, but I think it's more of a factor sometimes than we think. So I think it's both. I, agree, I absolutely agree with you, and I think that's certainly a part of it. Virality comes from the, um, the understanding that other people are doing it in the same way that on Candy Crush, people go, oh, I want to go to the next level. I'm going to add Facebook. Right, and then that becomes a way for it to spread. So I think it, I think it's a combination. I mean, what Chris said earlier when he went on to the metro, and you, you would see these. I mean, in Japan, 12 years ago, people were completely focused on their little devices. I remember, you know, going to Japan and seeing that, and that was completely different from this country. I mean, people still. I mean, people do it more now, but it's taken a long time for that. Yeah, right. Streaming video in Korea was hot like years ago. Oh, yeah. and, like, you know, it's just people are just being like, oh, check out YouTube. Like, that's <laughs> but even in this for an example, like, we'll also say, like, oh, streaming video will not take off in the US because it's a Korean thing. But people do stream mm -hmm. Korean. Oh, it will, but it's a question of timing. So I, I, in 20 years, I've done like nine ish startups, mm -hmm. and three of the startups I've done, which failed completely, Five years later, had companies doing the exact same thing that were tremendously successful. Yeah. So I, I was that, way too ahead of the curve. Yeah, I think mm. that one has a lot to do with how it came to work like a pipeline thing. You know, yeah. It's almost like impossible to make a phone call in the US in some part. So yeah. you don't even think about screening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas in Korea, the, yeah. the pipelines you have, you can. You can. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely a combination of factors. I just think it's important to sometimes remember that there, there are cultural differences that we may sometimes not want to acknowledge that really are there. And, and are an important part of the process. Because, you know, just as um, dealing with reporters is totally different in Europe, um, as, you know, here it's just like, okay, give me the story, you know, give a crap, and they have a phone. In Europe, it's like, hey, let's go grab a coffee, let's go grab dinner. And, it, and in China, it, it's, it's like, who do you know? And then you get introduced to, you know, so there's, even in kind of that context, there's very different ways that the social um, interaction between, between people happen. And this, this actually is a very social thing, and in fact, it kind of, blends me into one of my next comments, which is, um, uh, aside from games, the second most important categories tend to be communications, um, messenger, messaging apps, um, and then, um, oddly enough, photo and music. Those are kind of two, the, the, sort of the top three kind of categories after, so top two after games, right, come into the sort of messaging. So we see WeChat, Skype, Line, Kakao, all these kinds of platforms and messaging platforms are becoming super important. Um, what are some of the emerging markets? Um, you know, China clearly for iOS. It'll be interesting to see what happens um, for China um, once the Android uh, uh, market starts to kind of settle down, and we have very clear players as to who who is going to be selling this. I saw a hand go up. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I see a lot of iOS and Google Play. Is there a credible number? Um, Incredible number three. three. Um, uh, so we've, if this is a statement on incredible number three, um, we've, uh, Amazon App Store is certainly one that we've added to our list. Um, and then, um, uh, 
Yeah, we, as, as um, so from our perspective, what we just looked at as demand grows, if demand comes up there, we will slap that store in there and add it in. So for us, demand is just kind of shown Google Play, iOS, Amazon App Store, and then we also have in beta our um, Mac App Store, which is the apps as opposed to the mobile, and the Windows 8 App Store, again, apps as opposed to the mobile, those are both in beta. So that's how we sort of approach it. If someone else comes up, hey, you know, and, and there's a demand for it, and you guys are telling us, we want to buy this data, we'll add it in. So, um, you know, we, we try not to kind of make our own statements about who we think is third, and just let demand show us, you know, who's third. Yeah. Um, so I get going back and forth. So uh, uh, Asian countries, um, another kind of one that two that have popped up, which were which were really interesting, is um, in Google Play in terms of downloads, we saw India pop in at number three. So again, you know, a market that actually took us a little bit by surprise, and we're like, wow, okay, you know, certainly it's something we should have thought. It's a lot, it's a country with a lot of people, and um, I think like a lot of developing countries, they probably uh, did a little bit of a leapfrog. Right, so you see in places like Thailand, in oddly enough, I mean, I was in Nigeria a couple years ago. Um, it's a totally different story, but uh, I was amazed in Nigeria in 2004 how many people had not just one, not just two, but three cell phones. I was like, really? I have one out of the United States. So I think developing countries can tend to do this leapfrog thing where they don't want to build the infrastructure. It's cheaper to just put in cell towers than to start stringing wires everywhere. So I, I suspect that maybe has something to do with it. Um, and Russia is, is a market that, that we've seen to really start to kind of take hold. And so we've been exploring it to try to get through these relatively, I'll blow through some of these. I'm happy to answer questions though. Um, game was uh, downloaded by country. Um, you know, I think it's a pretty, obvious sort of thing. You can see who the players are. This is iOS, this is Google Play. Certainly um, this comes to some extent because um, in China, iOS is established. Um, there are issues with China and Google and there are issues with who is the predominant um, app store on Android. So um, that's probably going to remain that way until that market starts to settle down and there's kind of a, a top two, top three. Um, we'll understand more kind of on, on the Android side. Um, but again, you know, I think some players that we didn't expect, things like you know, Russia in there, Brazil and India. So it's almost you could almost say the BRIC countries are really starting to, you know, take hold in, in a significant way. They have huge populations. Um, they also have um, smartphones are becoming cheaper, faster, more readily available, um, and so that certainly is going to play into this. Um, same kind of deal here. Revenues again. What I was kind of saying before. Um, what was interesting to us is that this is obvious. You know, United States, it's Apple. We're here. We're everywhere. We're a developed country. We've got the money to kind of afford the units. Um, Japan also sort of obvious. Um, and then kind of this this China UK play back and forth. Um, this was one that sort of took us a little bit, um, I think, by surprise at first. Um, which is to say, you know, Japan by a large margin, that's the other thing, it's not just that Japan is number one, but the revenues are a huge margin. You've got players like um, Gung-Ho, um, Puzzles and Dragons. Uh, they're a public company. You can go and look at their revenues online. It's insane. We're, you know, in a quarter, they're pulling in like $300 million off of mainly a couple of games. Um, so really enormous sums of money. Um, South Korea also, you know, Kakao, Cookie Run is the one that kind of comes to mind most because Kakao is really doing well with Cookie Run. Um, next slide. How are the markets shifting? I think this is a little bit of, of again, to kind of go back to what I was talking about before, um, you know, Russia kind of, you know, to jump four spots is a pretty big deal and certainly, you know, I think Russia is something that we want to be um, paying a lot more attention to. These guys have more or less stayed the same. Um, and then again here, um, China making the big jump. Um, it, it's become a more sophisticated market. I certainly, um, my first trip to Beijing, um, for me at least, I've done a ton in Europe and I've done Latam and I've done uh, not as much in, in Asia. And so when I went, I was amazed to kind of see like the Rolls Royce dealership in China and Beijing that is the biggest one in the world apparently. Um, a, a consumerism that's there, um, which definitely gets reflected in um, in, in the types of, of, of um, data that they're using, the types of money that they're spending, the types of devices that, they're, that they own. Um, um, this is Google Play, so, um, you know, and Google Play, 
you, we kind of see at one point, um, you know, last year the United States was number one, um, but then this big shift and likely um, coming from these big blockbuster games. One of the interesting things, I, I'm sorry I tend to focus on games, but it's where the, the money's made, and so um, it's where people usually ask me the most about. Um, it, the, the really interesting thing is, is, is that um, in games, what we tend to see are these kind of blockbuster games. So the top three over the past couple months of in games in terms of revenues has not really shifted very much. And there's more or less one of two ways to get in. And what we've, what we've more or less seen is that either you've got this blockbuster game and you've only got one, two, maybe three games, and that's what brought you into the, the top 10 in revenues, or you're like an EA where you literally have 900 plus titles, and that's kind of what brings you in. You don't tend to see a lot of folks in between. So it tends to be a little bit of an extreme kind of circumstance. <coughs> so very quickly on device trends. Um, uh, most most of the revenues obviously are on iPhone, but certainly um, iPad has has really started to, to to come up in terms of usage. They tend to use it differently. Um, there was a slide that we had we saw earlier that talked a little bit about um, about iPad usage. Um, phone is sort of the very obvious. Most people can afford phones. Um, an interesting observation that um, again Jinday in our APAC office had was he said, you know, people will have iPads. Um, in China and uh, and tablets and they tend to be more kind of this luxury item that's like a show item but when you're doing work when you're talking to people it typically tends to be the phone that people will grab so that anecdote tends to we, we think you know really play out in terms of, um, of, the, of the download by, by device that's Again, it's sort of, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Um, this is a, an interesting trend to me because um, we're almost even here between iPad and iPhone. So clearly iPad adoption in the United States um, itself is probably significantly higher. It is a luxury item and it is expensive. Um, that doesn't tend to bear out almost anywhere else um, in the same way. And, and so, you know, Japan, Everyone just does it on the phone. And again, maybe to what I think you were saying earlier, in Asian countries, you know, five, six, seven years ago, you already saw people kind of doing this on the train. And, and you know, I remember one of those scenarios in Japan too, like getting on this really, really crowded train and people just kind of doing whatever. You know, they were probably listening to music, talking, chatting with friends, a variety of different things. Is that measuring apps that are specifically for iPads? Because I know you can download it for the phone and then just transfer it over to the iPad. So maybe the first download was on the phone. And um, no, we can we can track the iPad download. We we get that as well. Um, so um, there are iPad versions um, that people still have to kind of download and have on there. Um, next slide. And that's kind of um, what I have to say. So I would encourage you, you know, check out Source Staff. It's free. Go to the blog. You can see our indexes. Um, we do a monthly games and a monthly apps index, and then we have a quarterly market index, and then we've got coming out probably in about two or three weeks, um, an IDC app and a joint report um, on the games industry. So they bring they bring the uh, hardware uh, numbers to the game, and then we bring the app numbers to the game, and we do this joint report that we'll be releasing 